Well, I am from India, but this is about the ethnopharmacological aspects of the seagrass and the steps towards its conservation in Andaman Islands. Actually, it is my dissertation work which is focused on the myofaunal abundance among the seagrass leaf blades. But in between, I come across a, uh, what we say, a fascinating result on the knowledge of those local peoples regarding the values of these seagrasses. So, I decided to present that result, the shocking result in front of you. The Andaman Nicobar Islands, even though we are from India, but this is more closer to the Southeast Asia. We have 1200 kilometer from the mainland to the Port Blair, but the last tip of the in Andaman Nicobar archipelago, we have about 100 kilometer from towards the Indonesia. So, it is also blessed with a pleasant deep blue sea and also we have enormous aquatic wealth because it is almost untouched and nowadays we have a lot of tourist hotspot we have found out and also we got a high degree of endemism and a notable point is it is blessed with a six or seven relic aboriginal tribes we are which are uh, uh, remotenized or uh, isolated in the forest area of the Port Andaman Nicobar archipelago. These were the, these people were uh, using these seagrasses, seaweeds, and also uh, most of the marine creatures as a part of their traditional and cultural aspects. And we have my study area. I have concentrated on the southern tip of the Andaman, uh, uh, South Andaman, and we have there uh, six different species: Halodule uh, pinifolia, Halodule uninervis, Halophila ovalis, Cymodesia, Thalassia, and Halophila ovata. The ethnophycology of the seagrasses. A little bit of work has been carried out throughout the world, but in Port Blair, we have a few or few work has have been carried out about the ethnophycology. It is the study of the people interactions with the aquatic autotrophic producers that is algae and also the aquatic vascular plants. In Port Blair, when we considering about the Andaman and Cobar Islands, we have the India, we have a southern coast and western coast, the uh, west, west coast and the east coast. The west coast is devoid of the seagrass, only very few we can found out. But in the west coast, we, east coast, we can find a few. The most of the seagrasses we are uh, we can find for the India is in this isolated Andaman Nicobar Island. And also, we are very happy to host these guests from the Australia, the sea turtles. They will be coming for the breeding to this uh, uh, different part of the Andaman Island. And the uh, Andaman administrations have uh, uh, made a special team, the forest team, to consider or to care these uh, sea turtle and their kids. But unfortunately, we are a little bit threat about the food that is seagrass. The dugong, this fellow is the national animal of the Port Blair. Still, we are, we are prohibited to study the biology of the sea of the dugong because they are the under threat and also we are have, uh, the most of the people of the Andaman Nicobar Island, they did not see their national animal that is the sea cow. They can see only through this photography. And also, uh, we, we can say that, uh, that, that uh, uh, the variety or the beautiful marine diversity, it is also conserved or this is maintained by this seagrass ecosystem. Okay, the threats of the seagrass in Andaman Islands start from the impact of the seawag tourism, which has been started from a, a few years ago. And also the tsunami during the 2004, a dark memory for the Andaman Island people also towards the India and the Indonesia, most of the Southeast Asian countries. But after the one decade, the Andaman Island is in the way of uh, retrieving from this shock. And also the boat anchoring, it is also being a great threat to the seagrass ecosystem. And also the sea and plastic dump, waste dumping a result of the uncontrolled tourism, unsustainable tourism. It is the, this islands is also facing these problems. 
why it is important to the Andaman Island mostly because of the flora and fauna which are associated to, with the sea grasses which giving the beauty to these islands and also the, uh, the, the aborigines which I have mentioned in the first slide. These aborigines people are using these sea grasses as a part of their culture, as a part of their traditional and also for their workshops. The relevance of the work it will start from the the unique value and the use of the seagrass within the coastal indigenous society is very few and also the shocking the, the thing which I made which made me to present this result in front of you is some of the speeches which are found out in the Port Blair or the Andamine Islands those with this seagrasses have made or found out a different uses among the local people ethno medicinal value. A, a good work which has been carried out in the Zanzibar of the Africa and also in the Tamil Nadu coast. But unfortunately, none of the work has been carried out in the ethnophycological aspect of seagrass in the Port Blair. A detailed distributional and ethnophycological work in seagrass is parts from Andaman, but the surveying study is going on. The several studies focused on the forest surveys of the seagrasses in India, but we are still lacking a great or good study of about the seagrasses and its biology from this isolated territory and the Manicobar Islands. The objective is to make or to study or to find out what is the status of the knowledge of the local people of the Port Blair or the Andaman Islands about this, this uh, seagrass ecosystem and also to assist or to give the suggestion for the conservation of the seagrass for them and also for those marine fauna and the flora. We have made a personal interview in between our uh, this uh, myofaunal study and we contacted about 30, 30 informants from the 50 post possible participants, 10 men, 10 women and 5 of each male and female children. This is because the men, they will be going for the fishing, the women will be there in the coastal area in their house. So we have to find out which community, which people, the women or men or the children who have the more knowledge or more uh, uh, what we say uh, 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 information regarding the uses of the seagrasses and its, conform, uh, its conservation. The age limits range from the 12 to 75. The occupations will be fr uh, uh, from the fishing to a lot of local uh, government jobs, jobs and lot of works they are doing. All the interviews were conducted using the Hindi and the Malayalam languages. These are the key interview uh, qu questions. But Unfortunately, they have only one word asked a question that is only yes or no and it is very pathetic condition, uh, the condition of the knowledge information about the seagrasses in this area is very pathetic. The ethnophycology of the seagrasses, we have founded a exceptional cultural diversity in the study area. The indigenous people were mixed with the settlers from the south, east and south west India. Many people within this group speak a different a number of local languages. But as per the interview conducted among the local people, the east coast of the Andaman, they are using this seagrass for any purposes. They are not using the seagrass. Some of the people, they can't recognize the seaweed and the seagrasses. They are, according to them, all are the green leaf. It, it is a green thing. Okay, it's, they are just avoiding. They don't know, they can recognize whether it is a seagrasses or it is a seaweeds. During the conservation or our study, no traditional medicinal practices as usually the tribal people or the uh, local people who are living towards the uh, coastal uh, coastal area they might have come across or may, they might have found out a little bit information about the medicinal value at least the medicinal value but unfortunately the result was very unfortunate or very pathetic see i am very sorry to show about this result that is the traditional knowledge about the sea grasses among the study area in the people of the study area is zero. Ethnomedicine is again zero. The conservation, okay, they can simply tell, okay, we have to conserve it. We have to uh, uh, care for the genus, uh, coming generation. They have a little bit idea or they have a little bit opinion about the conservation aspects. And also other utility, that is very interesting. They are using these seagrasses 
for scrubbing the boat, for scrubbing the uh, their buffalo and their their cow. They are none they, except that they are using no uses with these sea grasses. That is a major shocking scene which I came across in front of while we are doing that survey. And they have little knowledge about on its importance in the ecological role. The conservation measure has to be taken in, in this study area. It is in this context, uh, the petition which is suggested by the CD uh, is in relevant. And also in Andaman, when we take the case of the Port Blair, we are having, we are now ready to translate the science into action. But in this, there are a lot of area where science has not reached yet. So, we have to start from the A, from this type of area and also we are concluding, we are concluding this study which by, uh, by giving a little bit suggestion which we I have collaborated from a lot of uh, works, the major work which is carried out from the Singapore and I have the possible, uh, what, what we say, the possible suggestion which, which we can suggest to the uh, to overcome this condition of the sea grasses information ethnophycological informa information about the sea grasses in the port blair which include improving the waste water treatment the controlling the surface runoff regulating the boat traffic these people they are not at all bothering while anchoring the boat simply they are anchoring about the seagrass meadows and uh, uh, placing this this boat above the seagrass meadows and it will be crushed under this boat and also we have to we, we should the authorities should be vigilant about these aspects and also we should do the possible method for restoring the seagrass beds i think it is successfully carried out, out in the singapore which i got this information from that paper and also we have a little bit uh, as a continuous we have to avoid the walking through the seagrass the sustainable the unsustainable uh, uh, tourism on this type of uh, 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 vulnerable uh, uh, ecosystem it should be checked and also we have to avoid the digging for the bait in the seagrass beds and also avoid uh, the anchoring or the mooring boat over the seagrass beds okay that's all Hi, uh, this is Fondicherry University project? Not or project, it's a dissertation work. Dissertation oh, okay. work. I think there are many people here from Andamans, uh -huh, okay. uh, India. It is better to sit down and discuss about this. Yes, sure. Uh, the things you have done, there are several questions I can ask, several. Uh -huh. Like selection of uh, people you have selected, whom you have selected. I have worked in Andamans 23 years back. I have worked in Kachal, Nankauri, Trinket, Maya Bandar and all the places. Port Blair is not Andaman. Port Blair is capital of Andaman and we, uh, uh, means, you know, m uh, tribals there have very good knowledge of sea grasses. Sea cucumber cultivation, all those things. Over -exp exploitation is there, I understand what you are saying. But awareness, ethnobotany and all these things, if you go, then many people don't know their own. There are terrestrial plants for ethnobotany. Seagrass is not used for this one. Seen is not that bad, but there are many seagrass studies done in last 20 years, after tsunami also, before tsunami. And we had UNESCO project with forest department, we were doing that. Um, it is selection of people, like interview when you are doing, it is selection of people and questions you are asking, whether it has gone through social uh, scientist or not, what kind of questions you are asking, why you are asking and what data you are going to get, how you are going to analyze all these things if you don't do, then result will be very means, like sad, discouraging like you described. There are people here, four, five, I think, I know working in Andamans and they have done really good work in seagrasses, though scientific part. You are doing a very good job of uh, communication, uh, this one. Please continue that, but try to understand situation in Andamans. It's a mixed community now. People from south, different places, and they have no idea of um, uh, seagrass. I'm sorry, I'm taking more time, but I find <laughs> there okay. are many questions to be asked for this okay. presentation, and I can discuss with you outside this meeting hall. Yeah. Shall I answer for this?
<laughs> only questions it will be okay. So, uh, the studies uh, we, we have carried a lot of work has been carried out from the different organizations in the uh, uh, Port Blair, but I am presenting about the ethnophycology of the sea grasses, but uh, the condition there is no published work that we can say there is zero published work about the ethnophycology of the sea grass in this as in the Andaman island that is what which I have to present in before you and also the, uh, 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 the ethnophycology of the terrestrial plants okay we can use. But we have to use the exploit the sustainably uh, uh, what we say uh, maximum utilization of the available resource in a sustainable manner. So, we should not restrict in the terrestrial plan, we should go through the uh, maximum uses of the seagrass also. So, we should also go through that area and also we have a lot of work that is very happy to hear uh, th that is uh, the uh, what we say the work the scientific work through the seagrass has, have been carried out by him for the last 22 years. But what I have to say is it is not reached among the common people. These local people they have been setting they are been selling more than 6 decades. But the information about the conservation aspect of these sea grasses did not reach from the scientists to the local people. These aspects also we should discuss in this type of the plenary sessions. Okay, interesting discussion. Okay, thank you.